Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hello everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a brand new show in store for you this week. I'll take you out on a late season goose hunt that happened here in February on a golf course in southern Michigan where we are trying to manage the goose population there. You won't want to miss that story. Jordan's going to introduce us to a group of high schoolers who are building their own fishing rods. Another exciting story. And Jimmy's got another outdoor adventure in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We are going to kick things off on this week's show by doing a little rabbit hunting. There was recently a tournament that just happened just north of the Lansing area. It was a ton of fun. Lots of good folks there. You won't want to miss that. All brand new this week. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pond, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi. Mid Michigan Ponds has been building and maintaining ponds and lakes throughout Michigan for nearly 25 years. We combine biology and heavy equipment to make pondscapes that are sustainable and fishable. More information at midmichiganponds.com. This little cabin just north of Lansing was a deer camp I went to for the youth season. Each year they host a kid that either is a cancer survivor or one that is still fighting the disease. When I found out that they host a rabbit hunt to help raise funds for that hunt, well I jumped at the chance to come back. It doesn't hurt that these guys are some of the best guys you're ever going to meet. And oh by the way, they have some rabbits around as well. Good morning Jimmy. Good morning. Oh, we've got quite the sleigh team here, alright. <laughs> Good, Good morning. Rabbits Good morning. Down. What you got here? A great rabbit dog. Had to chase him down. Connected him. him. All right, good job. Good bunny. Took a few shots, but you got him. Grant. Good deal. Good push. This little swill was a good spot over here. Yeah. Push two more. Nice. All right. There you go. Good job, guys. Uh, today, some of my buddies are putting on a rabbit hunt tournament for the Peter Sunny Day Foundation, helping out kids with cancer. And tell me, how many years you guys have been doing this, and kind of how did this whole thing get started? Um, third year, fourth year, I think it's uh, fourth or third or fourth annual. Um, everybody, uh, everybody in the community just helps out tremendously with our foundation, and uh, we do golf tournaments and. Uh, basketball and football and just all kinds of different things but the sportsmen really like to uh, kick in we do a, a youth hunt for a cancer survivor um, and we try to raise you know the money from this this rabbit hunting tournament all goes towards that 
Um, so this year, there was, as of yesterday, there's 42 teams signed up, pre-signed up. Uh, who knows how many will actually be there at the at the weigh-in today at three o'clock. Um, it just it's just been a remarkable uh, turnout these last few years, and a lot of money raised up for a great cause. So three o'clock, uh, the weigh-in, the 10 heaviest rabbits. Uh, there's a first, second, third prize. Uh, I think they got six guns they're giving away. Uh, a lot of door prizes, stuff for the kids, uh, different raffles, stuff like that. And these are two-man teams? Two-man teams, yep. And heaviest he rabbits win? Heaviest 10 rabbits, yep, up to 10 rabbits. And uh, I think we might have a, a few teams out here with us today that's got 10 rabbits, so. Nice, and this weather, not always this nice, is it? If we no, this? no, not uh, February and sun shining and t-shirt or sweatshirts. It's, it's a beautiful day to be out in the woods. It was a beautiful day. I would be joining a few different groups today, but our first group, well, they were finding bunnies every spot we went. Getting good footage, well, that is a different story. Oh, Wait, hold on. Come right at you, he's right behind you. I don't, I don't have a gun, right, he's got my gun. Stay right there, I'm gonna go walk in there. I'll go around this way. Actually, Angel, go that way. Yeah. Right here in front of you. Hi. Right, you saw him. Did you get him, young fella? Yes. In there. Let's see. Go get him. <sighs> nice job. <laughs> He's a monster. Yeah, come right there. Nice job. Thanks. Yeah, I got him in my bag. Is that your first rabbit or no? No. Okay, you're an old pro at this, eh? Yeah. Good job. There goes one coming across the trail. There's a bunch in here. Yeah. <laughs> I just love this brush. So I was on to the next group. Down the road we went to join PJ and his crew. They had a bunch of dads and kids and a very successful first few spots. And we were hoping to continue that success with the camera along. The problem with a big crew on a rabbit hunt is the odds are very small of having the camera with the right hunter. But we got a little lucky a time or two. It's under this log. This log oh, I see it. I see it, Dad. Yeah, shoot it. Kick it out. Right, you want to shoot it? I can shoot it. Hold on, wait for us to get out of the way. Can I shoot? Nope. Am I good? Yeah. Yep. yep. Smoke it. I got it. Nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, see if you can get over there and get it. Okay. Well. Uh, I can get it. Get it All right. Oh, will you hold this one? <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? Big bunny. Hold him up. Oh. There it is. There you go. Who got a, does anyone have a couch? I do. I do. You got him? There. That's Archer. <laughs> get him, Archer? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta watch your toes around here. It's <laughs> <laughs> every man for themselves. <laughs> nice. That's what we're looking for. A few more of these. Good deal. Alright. Good job, bro. Oh. I think we're finding a few. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I found, their, found where they've been hiding all day. Brody, where it went past me? I didn't even see it. Brody, where, where are you at? Right here. Did you get it? Let's see, hold him up. Yeah, but I. There's nothing left of him. <laughs> well, he's wet. He'll weigh a little bit more. It's a swamp rabbit. Dude, I'm not yep. even. It came right here, and I didn't even see it. Really? Yeah. Why don't you get your shells, buddy? Okay, I'm just gonna talk about it. Are you doing it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's. Uh, oh my. That one's mangled. So we're in St. John's. Uh, we're trying to hit some some higher ground today. A lot of uh, a lot of the snow and ice is melting, so everything's flooded. Uh, we picked a few wood lots that we thought would be above water, and we are uh, the dads seem to be the dogs, and the, the kids are the shooters today. So we're uh, everybody's getting their work out. And you kind of are kind of hoping to get kids involved in this too, then, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's for us. It's all about the kids. You know, we're, we try to help kids with our our foundation, and then uh, we. 
all of us adults love taking the kids out in the outdoors on a on a sunny day. We'd much rather be out there than inside and teaching the kids the the ropes of, of small game hunting. You don't see a lot of that anymore. Everybody seems to be just after that big buck um, and trying to get these kids out there rabbit hunting or squirrel hunting or pheasant hunting, whatever it might be. Um, sort of a little uh, throwback to the days when we were young. So, Getting some of these kids to enjoy some small game hunting is for sure a good thing. And some of them got to see some good dogs work today as well. The day was winding down with a 3 o'clock weigh-in, so we were all getting ready to head in soon. Ended up with 68 teams signed up today. Now you both got shots at it. Who, who, who connected? I don't know. Team effort? Probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the one the dogs are running, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job, guys. One in the basket. Yeah. All right, good job. Uh, this is the Cottontails for Cancer event. Uh, Cr Cricket Christopher Good Connect puts it on, and uh, we are just finishing our registration, our weigh-ins. It looks like we had a really good team turnout this year, and uh, it all all the proceeds go to the Sunny Day Foundation. Um, it's a foundation, local foundation here in St. John's that works with children with cancer and helps the families uh, normalize life during that battle. Um, this is the third annual one. Cricket started it three years ago, and it's really grown good. And, we're pretty happy with the turnout today, so. Yeah, it's kind of a fun day for the middle of February. Yeah, yeah, I think we uh, never had anybody show up uh, wearing tank tops to a rabbit hunt, but we broke, <laughs> broke some ground today. <laughs> In first place, uh, at 36.34 was Nick and Blake, and they are getting $942. <laughs> You're in yourself a home. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. By the end of this year, Peter Sunning Day Foundation will have reached over a half a million dollars raised. So. Yeah! Yeah! A great cause. And once again, sportsmen and women going above and beyond. So if you're wondering, yes, there still are some great people doing some great things right here in Michigan's out of doors. In this next story, I headed out with a group of guys who is enjoying the very last moments of the very late goose season here in Michigan. Good morning. Uh, we're over here at a golf course near Romeo, uh, trying to get rid of some of the nuisance geese. Yeah. And uh, got so, a couple days left, right? Yeah, today and tomorrow, the 12th, is the last day. Okay. And we've done going? we've done real well the last couple times we've been out. All right, who's going with you? Uh, my son Greg, uh -huh. and uh, well, one of my best friends, Ron. All right, and who's this? That's per Purdy. Purdy. Purdy, yeah. All right, cool. Okay. And uh, how are you setting up out there? Oh, uh, decoys. Not many. Okay. We don't need many. Yeah. Yeah. They all want to be here, so. Awesome, well we'll get it, get it together and get out there, hey? Eh? Yeah, oh yeah. Greg and Ron took the load of decoys out to the fairway where we'd be hunting this morning, and I rode out with Greg's son, Greg, who has a lifelong passion for waterfowling. I started hunting when I was 12 years old, 1986 waterfowl hunting. Yep, I've been doing it ever since. With your dad, you hunt a lot? Yep, me and Pops do it all the time. By far my most passionate thing I do is my waterfowl hunting. With all of the goose droppings covering this golf course, it's easy to see why the owner wants to manage the population here. Like many golf courses in this part of the state, there's a huge population of resident geese that stick around for the entire year. The late season is a perfect time to make a dent in the numbers here, so come golf season, there aren't so many nuisance birds making a mess of the course. The owner of this course had a front row seat to the action today. That's the owner's house right there. He's got a permission for us, so wants us to take care of the geese so the golfers are safe come season. Yeah, it's just basically us out here right now this time of year. Don't have to worry about golfers in February. Right. So it should be a nice smooth day. The birds were out here to start. The birds will come back in and then the birds will stay when we're done. Shooting time arrived and the action started right away. Over top from our right single. Yep. Going in the pond.
Oh, one high, one high. The more senior Greg has always loved his hunting dogs and has a special fondness for his dog, Purdy. Purdy was uh, a rescue dog. She uh, evidently bit uh, one of the guy's uh, kids. They had her in um, rabies quarantine and they kept advertising, trying to find her a family. That, and nobody wanted her because they said that she didn't like young kids, which is fine with me. I'm an old fart live by myself, so. Uh, I went down and adopted her. She's been my hunting partner ever since. Purdy was in her glory retrieving the first bird of the day. I was caught off guard changing batteries in my camera and never thought the goose that landed in the pond would get right back up. The guys dropped it and I missed the shot but captured Purdy's retrieve. We had another single bird coming in as Purdy made her way back. <laughs> Nice shot. Nice shooting. Thank you. That was a nice short one. Yeah, I do uh, I do much better when I'm on camera. <laughs> I miss when I'm off camera. Oh, well, that's usually the opposite. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah I, I thrive under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yep, more for the freezer. Nice. Off to the sausage factory. <laughs> We had several groups of birds that looked like they were heading into our decoys and flared at the last minute to head out of range. Just now they're starting to get a little uh, call shy, decoy shy, and uh, those birds should have come in. But right at the last minute, they took off. And it wasn't because any of us were moving. It's just because they're getting shy of the decoys or maybe they saw my coffee cup or whatever, you know? Long season for them, though. Oh, yeah, we've been shooting them out here since September. Yeah, September. But this is our favorite season, the last season. Yeah, and we don't have to worry about golfers. <laughs> We've been out here and had golf balls landing in the decoys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're getting a little, they're getting a little de decoy shy, a little, little call shy. So, but they kept coming back every time I called. So I, maybe it's the decoys. Maybe they don't look good enough to them today. Who knows? I don't know. It's always something. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. As soon as it was light enough and the geese were in the air, Ron set off on a walk around the golf course to see if he could jump some geese in another spot. We heard his shot and saw him making his way back with a bird in hand, but had to stop and hide when another group came by. What do we got here? Well, I uh, went along the river there. Yeah, so the birds were landing on the other side of the river, so I figured to uh, take a walk and uh, spooked them up and one happened to fly right over my head, so I... Just... Nice, good shot. Well, thank you. Nice bird. Cool. Right, here we go, here we go. Well, we gave it a try, but this milder weather opened up a lot of the smaller ponds and the birds didn't quite cooperate like we were hoping. We did manage to put, what, five, five or six down? But they were just the occasional single and double coming by. Besides that, the big flocks just went on to a different open water spot. They decided this wasn't the spot today. So is there an argument about who shot that one? No, he'll see my pellets when he cleans it. <laughs> It doesn't matter, it was on the ground for the dog, that's all that matters. One thing is certain, these guys love their dogs and love being out here where the geese are. The late goose season ended February 12th, the day after we were out here. But you'd better believe when season opens again next fall, Ron, Greg, and Greg will be geared up and ready for the action. Spending time with friends, family, and a great dog is good for a waterfowler's soul, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. We wrap up this week's show in Ionia, Michigan, where I was able to visit my old high school and learn all about a program aimed at getting more students involved in the outdoors.
So today we're uh, building custom fishing rods. We started doing this project about four years ago when I took a uh, in-service through mud hole. And now every kid in this class comes in and builds a custom rod. Uh, we've got various stages here from kids that are just tying eyes on to where we're finishing and epoxying eyes. Uh, but we started this project shortly uh, after Thanksgiving and we are now at the kind of the finishing point. This has been, you know, a good opportunity for kids to do a hands-on project or, and build something that they're going to be able to use in the future quite a bit. Building a fishing rod takes time and there's lots of steps involved. So I had Jason walk me through what the process looks like from start to finish. So the first step we have to do, Stacia, is we have to spine the rod. So when you spine your rod, you've got to lay it in your hand and you're going to roll it on the ground. And as she rolls it through, you'll be able to feel it snap and you can find where the strongest point of that rod is. So when she finds that, then we identify that and that's going to be the backbone of the rod. So we'll tie all of the eyes, since it's a spinning rod, on the bottom side of that and have the reel seat set on that. Did you find it? Okay, so where is it at? So the spine's right here, so we'll set our reel seat on the bottom and we'll tie all of our eyes on the bottom from here. So after we've spined the rod, we have to take and put the handle on. This one's already had our cork handle on it to the bottom part. We set that handle, then after we set the handle, we have to set up where the reel seat will go on, so we have to tape some arbors on or it'll bounce around. So once Seth's done this, he's got it so that fits very snugly on there and it won't come off. After that, we have to reel or remount the top so that we can put the top on there. And as you can see, Seth's working with a reamer here where he'll ream that out until it gets to be the size that it needs to to slide onto the rod. So that after we've done all of our seat, we've set our reel seat and uh, we've set our handle. Peyton's going to go through and confirm where he wants to put the eyes on. So this is a six foot six spinning rod. So he's got a guide over here on the table that comes with the eyes and he'll mark out where you want to set that eye at. So he uses a china marker to put this on here at three inches and then six and seven eighths. So he'll move to that one and he'll move right down as he's going through so he can mark those out. Once he's done marking them, we'll tie the eyes on with the eye being right above the mark. All right, so Autumn's going to start her tie here. She's laid out her rod so she knows where she wants to leave or start her tie at. She's going to wrap it around two to three times or possibly more here on where she goes with it. And then once she's done that, she's going to lift the start up over the top of those threads, which will lock the other ones in. So once she's lifted that over, she can start tying or wrapping that around the rod and it'll stay in place until she gets down to the finish part. So what Autumn's about to do right now is she's about to finish her tie. So she's la wrapped in a uh, loop to be able to pull her, her string back through. So what she's going to do is loosen the tension off of this a little bit. After she loosens the tension, she'll cut her string and then she'll run that through. She'll run it through the eye and then she'll pull that back through in order to lock that string in so that it's in there permanently. You see how she's holding that in there so she's always keeping tension on it because if you don't, it would end up getting loose and then the whole spool that she's just tied on would be on there. So what she's got now is she's got that tied in and so that's a really nice tie right there and so she'll cut this off and try to leave as little tag as she can do. So the final step that we'll have here on the eyes is we epoxy the thread on so that they are permanently in place. Um, we use a two-part epoxy that we have to mix up and it takes about five minutes to cure. After that five minutes we'll put it on here as you can see the rod has to keep spinning. Once we put that epoxy on it's not going to move anymore so it is permanently affixed so you got to make sure you're happy with everything you've got there. The benefits of this project go well beyond the finished fishing pole. More importantly, it's a great segue into the world of fishing and our natural resources. 
This rod building project was something that I started to do as we've been working with the Salmon in the Classroom program. I think this is a really important activity because it gives kids an opportunity to actually have something tangible in their hands that's fun that they can use for recreation as well as uh, gives them an opportunity to see why learning about fishing is important. One of the things we do with the uh, fishing rod in the Salmon in the Classroom program is we learn the history of why salmon are in the Great Lakes. Um, the different types of fish, how to identify them, um, some of the different issues in terms of whether they live in a cold water body or they're in a warmer water body here in Michigan, and uh, invasive species. It just gives us a lot of ways to teach some different things. It's refreshing to see educators incorporating the outdoor lifestyle into the classroom, and hopefully this project helps to add a few new anglers to the landscape. Thanks to Jason and the crew for inviting me out and for all the work that they do to get more students into the outdoors. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of great things for you here in the late winter and into early spring. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Good place to be checking us out there. And make sure you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. Jordan just got back from the Upper Peninsula. We're going to be doing an extended story on our wolf population. You won't want to miss that. And if you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, don't forget this weekend is Outdoor Rama down there in Novi. It is always a lot of fun. And if we don't see you there, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. When I wander far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man.